Hi guys, Kamal Zid Mac here today to speak about chapter 1, grade 11. The second video is this. On the first video, I explained the trades, the importance of trades, what is wholesale, what is retail, domestic trade and the international trade. Today, I'm going to speak about what is supporting services. If you haven't watched the previous video, you have the link under this video. You can just click that link and watch the previous video. And if you are not subscribed my channel, please subscribe my channel to learn with me more. Uh, this Commerce with Mac is a YouTube channel to teach accounting, economics, business studies, syllabus for national, Edexcel and Cambridge completely free. And also I put a lot of tips and tricks to pass your exams. The strategies the examiner is requesting from you all is taught under this channel. So let's move on to the topic we want to discuss under the topic supporting services. As you all have watched my previous videos, I don't read the entire content. Whatever is important, I make it short and sweet and explain you what is this topic is saying. So when you're getting ready for exams, watch my videos completely before your exams. That will give you a complete understanding or that will make you make yourself easily uh, focused on the things you wanted to get prepared for your paper. So let's start the part we want to discuss today. So I'm going to get my annotation bar. Let's start guys. Supporting services. Businesses engage in producing and distributing goods and services required by the humans. Business organizations require the support of different services in order to conduct business operations successfully. These facilitating services are known as supporting services. Today, due to revolutionary change that occurred in these supporting services, the world has become a global village. So when they say global village, guys, they're saying that how one particular uh, person in one particular country can produce, produce and sell the products to a different country. So global village is like the interrelationship of transaction between different countries from one place. Today, we are selling the products through internet to another country or purchasing the goods from another country to our country. So these are a part of global village. The transactions are happening internationally. It's a term to use under this term global village. Amid the different supporting services available, the following selected supporting services are to be discussed. So there are a few services which we are going to speak, but today I'm going to speak about the banking services. Let me go quick, not to make this video a bit lengthy. Insurance services, communication services, and transportation services. So moving on to the topic, banking services. The services offered by the bank to businessmen to conduct their business activities successfully are known as banking services. The development in the banking sector today has immensely influenced on the successful of the business. Among the different types of business banks existing today, the supporting services provided by commercial banks will only be discussed below. So today we are going to speak about commercial bank services rather than central bank because central bank is the main party which prints the money, but commercial bank is how they regulate the business day to day. So when I say commercial banks, I'm not meaning that commercial bank of Ceylon. I'm meaning all the banks under the comes under the term commercial bank. For example. HSBC, uh, Ceylon Bank, People's Bank, NSP Bank, all these banks come under the term commercial bank. So you all need to have an idea. When I speak about commercial banks, I'm speaking about entire banking system. I'm speaking about the entire banks, which is termed as commercial banks. So let's move on to the topic we want to discuss. Commercial banks are the institutes providing various banking services while maintaining current accounts and other accounts. So when I say a current account, you need to remember one particular thing. The people who are having the chance of writing a check book, those people are known as current account holders. So when you have a current account, most probably you can write a check. That's what you need to remember when you know, you don't want to go that deeper when you're learning this, just put it in your mind. These are also known as licensed commercial bank due to the fact that they are operated under license issued by the Central Bank of Sri Lanka. There are a number of services offered by these banks to customers. So all the banks in Sri Lanka should be registered under Central Bank of Sri Lanka without registering in Central Bank of Sri Lanka. They cannot regulate their day-to-day -day activities. Every bank must be registered under the Central Bank of Sri Lanka. And they should follow the certain protocols and procedures in order to function in, the, in, in that particular country, in Sri Lanka. There are a number of services offered by these banks to customers. Among them, the following supported services offered by commercial banks are discussed below. So the main two services which we are going to speak today is number one, service related to deposit. Number two, services related to electronic cash. So let's see what are the services they are giving when it comes to deposit. The commercial banks maintains various deposits accounts in order to provide an opportunity for the businessmen to deposit their excess money and to facilitate their business transaction. So uh, commercial banks, when I say commercial bank, as I said, I'm meaning about all the commercial banks. So it can be NSB bank, it can be a people's bank, it can be a commercial bank, HSBC bank, whatever it is, it is, going, it is known as commercial bank. So all these banks 
have these basic facilities of deposit. So there are three deposits which we are going to speak now. The three different types of deposits accounts are as follows: savings account, fixed deposits, current account. When I speak about this banking system, I remember one particular thing. I want you to remind. Uh, Every time when you go and deposit the money into the bank, remember one particular thing: the bank is also using your cash. Every business under the banking system, the moment you go and put your money into the bank, the bank will take your money and they will use by giving it as loan for other people. So whenever you see in the uh, banking system that you have two million in your bank account, trust me, there is no money in your bank account. They are already utilized. So every bank has a system where they store some sort of value. This you will learn. This entire system under statutory reserve ratio in advanced level. For now, you need to remember every bank takes your deposit and they are utilizing to give it to loan and they make a give a margin to the keep a interest on the loans they are giving. From those profit, they will ensure to keep the deposit as much as possible. For your understanding, simply simply uh, in simple words, if I say your money is not in your bank account, what you see is just a, a duplicate of the things what you think. So every business will try to take your money, and they will lend it to as much as people, and they will earn. It's just a thing which I'm saying. Uh, but to ensure that central bank has some sort of regulation, they can't take all the money the deposits the customers are putting. They need at least to keep ten percent of the money because customers can withdraw the money anytime. Maybe if there are two customers who want to take the money out of the bank account, the reserves ten percent which they have hold from all the banking system. They will pay to the customers from that out of the reserve. When I say now, you might not understand it in a very big manner, but this is not tested in your O level, so let's skip that area just for your basic understanding. Let's move on to the point we want to discuss. Savings account businessmen as well as any individual can deposit money and withdraw money at any time from these accounts. The banks pay an interest at a certain rate for these accounts. Savings account can be opened individually. Or jointly by few individuals. Today, commercial banks have introduced different specialized savings account under different names other than the normal savings account. Actually, they might ask different types of savings accounts in exams. One or two marks you might get on your paper, so you need to know what type of savings accounts are available in Sri Lanka. So, Danoja Dana Yojana savings account, savings accounts for women, senior citizens account. So, remember two of these is more than enough. So, why savings account is important, guys? When you save, uh, when you put your money into the bank, you think that your money is saved, so you feel like you are saving some money for your future. That's a different story. I can go deep and explain you, but I don't want to make it so complicated. So let's move on to the next part. Opening a savings account would provide various advantages for both businessman and individual. Given below are such advantages. So you might see if you keep your money in the bank, they're saying that is advantages for me, for you. Uh, but for me, I don't think uh, saving is a better. option investing is a better option to get a return on investment but according to this topic saving is also giving you some advantages receiving security for money you think that if you can't save the money with your hand uh, if you think someone will steal your money you can go and keep it in bank earning an interest income the more uh, money you deposit the more interest you get ability to deposit or withdraw money at any time it's your own money so you can either use a card to make the payment or you can withdraw it any time you want Ability to withdraw money in an emergency. You don't want to ask anyone. It's your own money. You can take it any time. Ability to transact via automated teller machines. Again, you can use the automated teller teller machines. Means ATM. They are meaning ATM. Automated teller machine means ATM. So that's what they have meant. So that also uh, possible. Like you can do transactions through that. Ability to pay pay using debit cards. So only remember savings account can use debit card. They can't use credit card. So let's move on to the next part. Opening a savings account. What is the procedure to open a savings account? Not this much. You need to remember. Just remember what I read. I will give a short uh, part of this uh, explanation. So think. Uh, you know, want to uh, by heart what many students do. They by heart the entire paragraph. I remind you all, never by heart things. You all need to remember one particular thing when you are learning for your exams. Just read it. Take it to your mind. Remember it. That's more than enough for you to score more marks in your paper. The process. of opening a savings account is simple it requires to submit a duly completed savings account mandate of the bank deposit slip know your customer form and the tax declaration form along with the national identity card in order to open a savings account easy as that possible now let, let me underline this which is important for you to remember you need to have a savings account mandate of the bank you need to have a deposit slip you need to have your know your customer form and a tax declaration form So in most of the commercial banks, they don't make this complicated. 
if you go for the commercial bank and ask i need to open a savings account they will give a form that's all you don't want to fill this much of things but then according to your syllabus of course you need to remember this much of things then you might think i went with my mother i went my, with my brother i went with my sister i didn't fill this much of forms you might have this doubt but then you need to remember one particular thing this is your syllabus so syllabus is expecting something to you to remember then you need to remember these things so it says that savings account mandate of the bank it's a form which the bank gives you need to fill your names and your details and your address and everything in the deposit slip how much you are going to deposit in your account maybe 500 or 1000 that they will do that but you need to give them uh, by filling the deposit slip but actually they don't do that uh, i mean you don't want to do that they will do the deposit slip part know your customer form is about knowing about you the business will give you another form so saving account mandate uh, of the bank and the know your customer form is filled by you and the tax declaration form how much you are earning if it is it is like if you are earning if you are putting a lot of money into the bank like millions and millions then you need to uh, fill a tax declaration form if not if you are putting thousands and 500 and 200 rupees then no 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 need to worry but then still you need to remember this type of four forms are very important when you are opening a savings account savings account mandate of the bank deposit slip know your customer form and the tax declaration form along with the national identity card so you need to give your national identity card passport or even yeah passport or national identity card still considerable in addition it requires paying the minimum amount recommended by the bank or any amount greater than that when all these requirements are fulfilled the bank issues a passbook for the savings account holder it will record deposits withdrawals and the balance of the account don't make things very complicated it says that whatever the money in the bank is asking you need to give you can open a account then they give a passbook to your hand here sir take your passbook then you take the passbook like wow i have a account on my name and you can either put money take money out of the account they might even give you a debit card it looks like this guys let me show you my debit card so this is a commercial bank's uh, debit card so you can see this this uh, it looks like this this uh, pattern when it comes to debit card so let's me move on to the next part of the topic we want to discuss yeah so it says the second type of savings account which we are going to speak now the deposits fixed deposits the deposits that are maintained for a certain time period at a certain interest rate are known as fixed deposits this deposit system is important as a way to deposit excess money and as a safe investment opportunity there are several characteristics of a fixed deposit they are so what is a fixed deposit when you have a certain set of money or you have maybe 2 lakhs or 5 lakhs you have in your hand you want to take this money and go and deposit into the bank in savings account is completely different you, the more you get the more you put the more you say the more you put it's like that but when it comes to fixed deposit you open up i have 1 million i'm going to go and put into the bank and you ask the bank how much interest you pay me in return 5% so in 10 lakhs 5% is going to be like 50000 right so you get 50000 every month or maybe uh, 1% or 2% they might say a percentage rate you get for the money you uh, deposit in that bank and the good thing of fixed deposit like you get a lot of interest out of it and it's very safe and you can use it for a long comparable you can put a fixed deposit for a long period of time there are bad thing as well in a fixed deposit what's the bad thing you can't take the fixed deposit when you need it like uh, withdrawals you can't take the money out of it uh, that is there is no possibility like that if you want to take the fixed deposit there are certain rules and regulation you need to follow and sometimes when you take the money you might even get lower maybe for example if you put 10 lakhs you might even get like like 9 lakhs or 8 lakhs when you are withdrawing there are certain rules when you are opening up a fixed account deposit account remember to read the rules properly guys i'm not teaching you all for only for your exams i'm also reminding you if you become a successful person tomorrow when you open up a fixed deposit read the terms and conditions properly for god's sake the deposits that are maintained for a certain time period at a certain interest rate are known as fixed deposit this deposit system is important as a way to deposit excess money and as a safe investment property there are several characteristics of a fixed deposit there so let's see the uh, fixed deposits advantages maintaining the deposit for a certain period of time so you can keep it for a long period of time you don't want to take you don't want to worry about your money it's so safe varying interest rate depending on the amount deposited and the deposit period the more you put money the more you get interest in return recently a relatively high interest rate compared to normal savings account you get a high rate maybe in in savings account you get 0.01 rate uh, here, here you might get 1% or 2% a certain percentage of fixed deposit can be obtained as a loan by providing the fixed deposit as a collateral now this is where student get confused they ask this question what is this collateral collateral is a security in easy terms it's a security so the meaning of collateral is a security now how come you get money by giving your own 
a fixed deposit so remember guys when you put a fixed deposit you get a uh, certificate a fixed deposit certificate you can for example if you can't take your money from the bank maybe you put 10 million 1 crore or maybe you put 5 million that money you can't take uh, all of a sudden you can take that certificate and go for another bank and show here this much of money i have in this bank and they will give me maybe next year i need some money for my child's education can you keep this document and give me some money it's like pawning your jewelry jewelries so they will take your certificate and they will see the value they'll call to your bank and confirm it of course you have your money in that particular bank so they are very safe they will give you money but then the bad thing on when you take obtain loan from another bank they will charge the interest on the loan you have taken the good thing is you can take a loan when you have a fix uh, fixed deposit uh, fixed deposit in that particular bank you can take that certificate go for another bank and request the loan from the other bank the same bank will not give you money so you can take the certificate and re uh, request from the other bank so that's what i want to make you clear if you do not understand again please please check by uh, going behind of this video interest will be accumulated monthly at maturity or as per agreed term so when they put the interest every month you get a big amount of money so much big guys so not that big it's not that big you expect maybe for 1 lakh you get 1000 rupees for 10 lakh you get 10000 rupees for 20 lakh you get 20000 rupees something like that anyway so i don't want to uh, go and speak explain about why inflation why interest rate what is happening with inflation and interest rate again that's something which you will learn it in advanced level you know come to my you can see like i have uh, uploaded the entire business studies a level syllabus in my youtube channel so when you finish your o level go to a level watch and i think so you will understand what i'm trying to speak bank gives a certificate mentioned in the details such as deposit date deposited amount and the maturity date so when you get the certificate that is the certificate you can keep it as a collateral to take the money when you want so then we move on to next part of the part i'm not going to move on to do this activity yeah as we have very less time i will be moving on to the next part of the uh, video so we have how do we open a fixed deposit account when opening a fixed deposit a duly completed fixed deposit mandate the same way savings account mandate here fixed uh, deposit mandate deposit slip in also previous one also deposit slip know your customer form previous uh, savings account also know your customer form and a tax declaration form should be submitted with the national identity card the same procedure so just the uh, fixed deposit duly completed fixed deposit mandate deposit slip know your customer form and tax declaration so these are the four things you all you even used for to open the savings account you are using the same thing to open the fixed deposit account along with the national identity card so then you get a certificate from the bank to the customer that you have deposited this certain amount that easy guys when you are studying business studies you need to love your subject and you know, you can score a lot of marks on your paper so we'll move on to the next part current account i mean different types of accounts maintained by a commercial bank the current accounts are essential the important type of account for a businessman current account is an account which allows doing transaction via checks so when you go and deposit certain money most probably if your if your account is a business account or if you are dealing with a lot of money earlier they used to give current account for personal accounts now they are uh, only giving for business account but you can see current accounts can be open individual jointly or the name of the business so now today because of this pandemic situation they are only giving for uh, businesses but not individually if you uh, if someone is referring you maybe in recommendation if you are opening you can uh, request under individual account as well so you might see here most of the businessmen use current accounts in order to conduct their business activities easily when opening such an account an individual having an active current account in the respective commercial bank is required to introduce the new customer by completing the relevant relevant application form when opening a current account the relevant current account mandate and the deposit slip need to be completed and submitted along with the national identity card so here you don't have know your declaration form you might see here a uh, current account mandate and deposit slip along with the nic uh, national identity card these are the three uh, things which you need to keep when you're opening up a current account so they are saying that these three if it is there you can open up a current account uh, not like savings account in savings account you had a uh, know your customer form and tax declaration mandate and also on the second thing in fixed deposit account we had the know your customer form and tax declaration mandate but here you won't find that you need only current account mandate deposit slip and the national identity card so you need to understand one particular thing that once you get the current account the advantage is very vast you can write a check for another next month if you don't have to have money you can buy that property in advance by giving a check for that particular person because your check is valid from that particular bank this person will based on the trust they will get your check check transactions can be done via through the via through this current account 
let's move on to the next part of the point okay so the next part current account do not earn an interest the bank will charge a fee if the balance in the current account reduces below a certain level uh, amount and for the other services provided by the bank to the account holder so if you do not have money in the bank account this current account holders will be charged a certain amount of percentage so you should be very careful to keep uh, maybe 50000 is the limit you should not go below that 50000 in keeping the money if you have 45000 by end of the month you will be charged a small Fee, but every time when you get the checkbook, they will charge for a checkbook price charge, and each and each and every check has a small price. Okay, guys, because you are paying for checkbook uh, charges. Again, I'm not going to move on and explain you the activity. It's a very straightforward chapter, so we'll wind it up very fast. There are several advantages of maintaining a current account. So, what are the advantages? Number one, ability to make payments via checks. To ability to make payments via checks, make it easy and secure for the transaction done by the businessman. Employee salaries, electricity bills, insurance premium can be paid via checks. So you can see that, like, if, even if you do not have money, sometimes you can request the bank to make some payment by giving, or you can give one month date and make the payment. But uh, remember one particular thing: like, if you are paying the salaries to the employees, you can't give them one month later. You can go and take. If it is for supplies, you can do that. But when it comes to salaries when you put the money it should the money should be there in the bank account if you do not have money in the bank account this employees might go and ask the money from the bank the bank will call you and ask sir there is no money in your bank account can we give the money to the employees who are here then if you grant okay no problem you give i will pay it in a short period of time that facility is what we say it as bank overdraft facilities so you don't have money in your bank account you can request the bank to make some payment and you can pay it later here you might see here what they have given bank overdraft facilities can be obtained by getting permission from the bank to write checks for a balance which exceed the deposited balance in the current account if you do not have money in the bank account bank current account you can request the uh, bank to make some payments and you can request the bank that you will pay it in a short span of time the amount by which the current account holder has been indebted to bank by issuing checks under the permission of the bank exceeding the balance in the account is known as bank order if you do not have maybe for example if you have 10000 uh, rupees in your bank account and if you write a check for 50000 there's a shortage of 40000 this 40000 will be paid by the bank but this 40000 what the bank is paying is known as bank over draft the businessmen often use this facility to fulfill short term credit requirements when they don't have money they will take this money from the bank requesting some sort of uh, help what's the good thing why the bank is giving us overdraft facilities because they charge an interest fee on the bank overdraft they are providing to us then we'll move on to the next part the third one to collect remittance the money to be received by the businessmen from other organizations and individuals can be collected directly to the current accounts by the bank dividends interest income remittance from returns like remittances means to collect the deposits you can have current account if you have a good bank account people can directly put the money into the bank and easily you can do the uh, i mean you can collect those money because people will feel it very comfortable to send money to your account again this is also done in savings account the same thing which is uh, uh, given here the next thing to activate standing orders there are certain payments that businessmen have to pay continuously for certain activities a request can be made to the bank in writing by filing the relevant application form to pay a certain amount of money and certain time intervals continuously the payments made by the bank according to such written request are known as payment based on standing orders payments of insurance premium payment of loan installment for example if you need to pay certain lease installments which you have taken you can request the bank on 15th of this month uh, make the payment for my vehicle on 20th of this month make the payment for my supply on 25th of this month make the payment for my employee so like fixed employees like not a daily basis earners a fixed month monthly salary you can request the bank to make this payment so that you need to fill a application form and get this done this is known as standing orders guys not standing and ordering it's standing orders i know this joke is not that good to laugh but let's move on to the next part then receiving a bank statement the bank sends a statement to the current account holder stating that transaction done through the current account this is uh, known as the bank statement the statement can be obtained monthly quarterly or as per the requirement of the account holder through the statement the deposits withdrawals and the balance in the account are in formula addition this statement helps to reconcile the reasons for the difference between the balance in the bank account of this business and the balance in the bank statement if any i have taught you why a bank statement is important in grade 10 uh bank reconciliation chapter i explain you how a bank statement works completely go to those videos and watch the entire grade 10 you will understand not entire grade 10 grade 10 bank reconciliation chapter so now why a bank statement is important what's the uh, good thing like you will know how much the bank how much money you are taken from the bank how much money you have spent from the bank so you will have an 
idea about how to control your uh, banks uh, i mean uh, withdrawals from the bank so let's move on to the next part of the yeah it's coming to an end i think then we have checks guys so we'll uh, speak about the checks on the upcoming video which is the third video which i'm going to upload now first video i spoke about the trade second video i spoke about the uh, deposits the types of deposit commercial banks are doing and then on the next part next video i'll be speaking about checks how to write a check how to cross the check and how credit cards and debit cards works in a bank that we'll speak on the third video so if you like this video guys please do not forget to comment and subscribe please share to your friends that grade 10 syllabus is completely uploaded in my youtube channel you can ask them to go and prefer and also ask them to refer learning this uh, things very easily i have uploaded all and every i mean all the activities i have done for grade 10 for grade 11 i'm skipping only for business studies other than that i'll be uploading all the videos in every uh, in future every week i'll be uploading a video on grade 11 syllabus to finalize it before your exams which is in may june this year anyways guys so uh, see you all on another video with a uh, with the topic checks have a nice day